Hey guys, Michael Hyatt here. Welcome to The Daily Mentor. Today we're going to be talking about uh, kind of a follow-up to my podcast on why getting outdoors is important if you want to be healthy and more productive. Plus, I'm just going to take random questions and I've got some further thoughts on strategic planning because right now I'm not in my studio. You may know that. But uh, I'm at my strategic planning retreat with my team. We talked about that yesterday. I'm going to do a little bit more follow-on to that today. So good afternoon to you guys. I'm back, by the way, on my iPad. Somebody from Peru. Awesome. Uh, Michael from Austin, Texas. Jennifer from Raleigh. Yeah, give me your name too. Nancy from Wichita. Hello from North Alabama. My name is Michael Hyatt. I'm the author of Platform, Get Noticed in a Noisy World. Also the founder of Platform University. And what else can I tell you? Oh, well, what I do. Um, I really basically help overachievers that are overwhelmed, people just like you, basically get the clarity, the confidence, and perhaps the most important, the tools you need to win at work and to succeed at life. So today we're going to be talking about the podcast, we're going to be talking about strategic planning and whatever uh, questions you have. Somebody from Perth, Australia, hello. Uh, somebody, Stephen here, thanks for rocking Periscope. You bet, Phoenix, awesome. Gail Hyatt, my wife is on, awesome. Great to see you, honey. Tommy from Montgomery, Alabama, Juan from the Dominican Republic, from Colorado Springs. Guys, if you would share this, it would be hugely helpful. In the right-hand corner, you can see that there is an icon of a person with the number of people that are on this uh, particular scope. So just tap on that and then scroll down and share this with your followers so they can participate in it, in it as well. So this is going to be about a 30-minute scope, no longer than 30 minutes. I'm going to take random questions here in a minute, but I do want to talk about why you need to get out. Marissa, good to see you too. It's one of my daughters. Um, why you need to get outdoors. If you haven't heard my podcast today, uh, it's called Nature's Calling, and it's really about what I learned about getting outdoors this summer a little bit more than um, usual for me. Gail and I went on a month-long sabbatical. We went to Maine and we went to Prince Edward Island and we spent a tremendous amount of time uh, outside and it was terrific. Yeah, give me the heart love and especially if you're watching this by replay, you can still do that. If you hear something I say that you agree with or that you like, show me some hearts. Yep, exactly like that. So um, we had this great time outside. I mean, we went hiking. We loved being by the ocean, which we were in Bar Harbor, Maine. It was fabulous. Prince Edward Island, even more so. Uh, and then I got to go fishing, fly fishing, in Montana. And I love to fish. I particularly love to fly fish. And there was something powerful about being out on the water for 10 to 12 hours every day, standing in the water, casting, and catching those big, beautiful trout. It was amazing. But in today's podcast, I talked about the mental benefits of being outdoors. I talked about the physical benefits of being outdoors. And I talked about, uh, what was the third one? Good grief. Oh yeah, the spiritual benefit of being outdoors. So um, if you've got any questions about that, I'd love to answer those. And you can just ask them in the, in the comment session, section by just typing two question marks then your name in all caps and whatever question you have about it. But I can guarantee if you spend time outdoors, if you're a leader, if you want to be a creative thinker, if you spend time outdoors, it will really help you mentally. It'll help you physically and it'll help you spiritually in terms of expanding your um, perspective. One other thing I want to talk about is that I mentioned that I'm at our strategic planning retreat. So we even had a little notebook designed here. And yesterday, I thought I'd share with you a little bit about uh, what we did yesterday, and then you can ask questions about this if you're interested as well. But yesterday we talked about kind of corporate ideology, the importance of having um, a shared history. So we talked about the major significant events over the last four years of my company, and more importantly, what they mean. Now get this, what happens to you is important. You know, if you look back at the events of your life, whether it's you individually or you as a company, the events that happen are important. But here's the get this part. The meaning that you assign to those events is critically important because we have the opportunity to interpret the events of our life, whether they're good or bad. We can interpret those in a, in a positive way that serves us going forward or not. 
You know, those can be excuses. They can become a story in our head that keep us stuck. So one of the things I did yesterday at the beginning of our strategic planning retreat was to talk about, got everybody's ideas on what are the significant milestones about um, that, that has happened in the last four years and what do they mean for us? So we identified about 12 significant milestones and then we went through each one and we talked about what those meant. Hello, Violeta from Miami. Liz, Daryl, great, thanks guys. Uh, then we went from there to talk about our purpose. You know, every individual and every corporation ought to have a purpose or a mission. And so we talked about um, what our mission is. And basically what we said is what I said at the top of this scope, which we really help people that feel overwhelmed, especially high achievers that feel overwhelmed, a little bit stressed out. We help them get the clarity they need because when you have clarity, man, you can accelerate towards your goals and towards your destiny. We help them get confidence because there are a lot of people that are out there that have um, clarity, but they don't have the confidence. They're not really sure they have what it takes to move forward. And if that describes you, if you feel like you're lacking confidence, or let me put it this way, if you feel like you could use more confidence, I want you to tap five times on the screen. Give me five hearts if you feel like you could use more confidence. Whoa, there we go, okay, awesome. And then finally, tools, because once you have the clarity and then you have the confidence, what do you need? You need practical tools. But all of that, and this is the result that we want to deliver at my company, Intentional Leadership, we want to help you win at work, but succeed at life. And there's lots of people that win at work, but fail at life. You know, their health is destroyed, or their marriage is destroyed, or they're estranged from their kids. I don't want any of that. I want to be able to win, but not at the expense of my personal life. And so I'm, I've made a lot of mistakes uh, but I'm privileged to have been married to the same woman, Gail, for 37 years, happily married. We've got five grown daughters. We have four sons-in-law. We've got eight grandchildren. And I wouldn't trade though them for any amount of success. But I don't think it's either or. It's both and. So yesterday, we really worked on our, our mission and made sure that we had clarity and alignment on my team around that. Aaron says, as a young business professional, how can I find a job that allows for sabbatical time? Here's what I would say, Aaron. First, state the intention. In other words, just decide that you're going to have an intention that you want a job that will meet your requirements um, as an individual. So you don't have to compromise your health. So you don't have to compromise your marriage if you are married or your relationship with your children or any other aspect of life. You know, it's possible. But if you're not clear about what you want, then you're probably never going to get it. And most people, they just imagine, you know, that they can't have it. And so they rule it out from the get go. No, state it as an intention. Things have a way of showing up when you get clear on what you want. Okay. So that's where I would start. And then I would start interviewing employers for who meets those criteria. One of the things we're doing at my company, for example, is we really want to make sure that people have sufficient time off and we're talking about uh, four weeks of just vacation time plus 10 days in addition to that for just holidays because we want people to be able to nurture those other aspects of their life. So um, what other questions do you have about that? I'll keep going through some of the strategic planning stuff if you're interested. So interviewing employers instead of just letting them interview. Absolutely. You know, it's a, it's a bilateral thing. It's not just them interviewing you. But you're interviewing them because this is some place where you're going to commit a lot of time, your talent, your energy. You want to make sure that your ladder's leaning up against the right wall and you're actually pursuing the right kind of job for you. Chris says you're an inspiration. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate you showing up. You're on a lot of these scopes and I appreciate that. Uh, talk about clarity. Love this. Yeah. You know, um, let me just say something about clarity because... Sometimes we think if we can just kind of sit in our mountain retreat or go off in the woods somewhere that, you know, ah, you know, that the clarity will come to us and then we can move forward. That's not how clarity works. If you want to get clear, let's say you're trying to, to look at a sign that's um, maybe a couple hundred yards in the distance. What's the easiest way to get clarity so that you can read the sign? I'll tell you, take a step in the direction of the sign. For you, if you want greater clarity, 
Take a step in the direction of your destination. Just start moving, get in motion, and then you get the clarity. Four weeks paid vacation in the USA, maybe in the 60s. No, yeah, maybe in the 60s. I don't know. I, it's totally possible uh, today, but you got to find the right employer. Is it possible to get a transcript of this Periscope presentation? I'm afraid not. That's not something I'm uh, doing at this point. Um, somebody says, time off is critical to staying energized, motivated, and sharpening the axe. Absolutely. If you want a sharp axe so that you can do what's important, you've got to take time off and rejuvenate. Clay says, what's the most important heart or know-how? Sorry, Clay, I don't quite understand that one. Uh, somebody said, come speak at the United States Naval Academy. I actually did speak at the big naval base in San Diego, and I talked a little bit about this uh, topic, about the importance of taking time off and rest and rejuvenation and all that. And um, yeah, I'm not saying the Navy was too enthusiastic about that idea. Who else has an idea or question? Rest and rejuvenation are so important. They absolutely are. So once we talked about purpose... The next thing we move to in the strategic planning session that we're doing here is we talked about our core values. This is one of the most important things as a team that you have to have alignment around is what do you value? What do you regard as important? And we came up with eight different values in that session, but here's the important thing. Values are not something that as an organization you just you know put as a plaque up on the wall and then forget about them because that's how a lot of organizations do them. If you've ever experienced that, type yes in the comment section where the values don't mean anything. They're just a placard or they're a plaque, you know, in the lobby, but nobody really pays attention to them. Is that true? Yes. Yes. For many organizations I've worked for, that was absolutely true. And that's why you've got to take every value and translate it into the behaviors that manifest that value so that you can measure your performance, you can do your hiring, you can do your performance reviews, all that based on your values. So we identify those eight core values. Then we move from that to vision. Where do we want to be by 2020? Interestingly, that's a, it's a great metaphor, uh, isn't it, for clear vision? And so what we wanted to do is to get clear on what our vision is for 2020. And then today we've been talking about what our strategic priorities are for. Scott says, how do you swim upstream when balance? Oh, I missed that. I'm so sorry, Scott. It disappeared. Re-ask it again. Uh, yeah, sh um, her life project. We need to live out our values. Yes, Clay, I have a heart, but I lack an experience. Can you offer encouragement? Absolutely. You've got to make the best of what you've got. If you've got heart, and by that I'm assuming you mean passion, then let it show. Let a prospective employer know that you may not have experience, but you've got heart and you've got passion. I'll hire those kind of people all day long. I can make sure they get the right experiences, and I've got a high tolerance for uh, failure, but it's hard to gin up passion if people don't have it. Sejal says, is clarity a reality because things keep changing all the time? They do, and that's just reality. That's the new normal, it's okay. But uh, clarity is something that you've got to focus on every day, and you don't need total clarity. In other words, you don't have to know uh, the clear path from here till the ultimate destination. All you have to see is the next couple of steps and be faithful to take those in the direction of where you want to go. Scott, how do you work at a place uh, that balance is not valued? I wouldn't. I mean, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but I got to put food on the table. Again, start with the intention. State to yourself. Make a clear intention that I want to work at a place where balance is respected. And then you can begin to transition out of your current job to find something else that would be more congruent with the lifestyle that you want to build. And if you believe that, if, if you would like to have an employer that would respect balance in your life, give me some taps on the hearts. You don't have to work seven days a week to win. Somebody just said, absolutely. I think you can work five days a week, take two days off, and I mean really take them off. And here's what that means for me. It means I don't have business conversations. It means I don't read business books. It means I don't think about my business. It means respecting my people who work on my team and I don't pester them over the weekend because I want them to have time to rejuvenate. Um, <laughs> somebody says, get a job at a factory that makes scales, hashtag balance, cute. 
Uh, Scott says, I'll send my resume. Awesome. We actually are looking for three people. You can go to my website. Gail, I think you may have that URL, so put it up if you do, uh, because we're looking for three positions right now. Johnny says, how do you manage last minute requests? Great question. Well, here's the problem is, if you constantly honor those last minute requests, now I know there's some, pos some positions where that may be your sole job, but if all you do is deliver when people make last minute requests, you're training them that they can make last minute requests. And you say, but that person's my boss. It's not exactly like I can uh, not fulfill a request. Here's what you can do. You can go in and have a conversation with the boss. And you can explain why it's not serving him or her by making these last minute requests. That, that he or she is not getting your best work, not getting your most effective work, and that if they could alter these last minute requests and give you more lead time, you could do a better job and they could get more of what they want. So you've always got to be selling to people in terms of what they get. So Kurt says, who is Michael Hyatt? I'm the author of the, the New York Times bestseller platform, Get Noticed in a Noisy World. I'm the former chairman and CEO of Thomas Nelson Publishers. I'm the founder of Platform University. And I've been married for 37 years. And I run a company called Intentional Leadership. And we do strive to have this kind of balance. Um, great way to flip it around to work for all involved. Love that my husband doesn't work on Sundays. Uh, this was a comment, which is great. Um, how to arm people to take action if they're successful in life but not confident in a new venture. Yeah, let me tell you how you get confidence. Um, the way you get confidence is you set a goal. I don't care what it is, but you got to make a commitment to do something. So, for example, um, I was kind of scared to do Periscope at the beginning because I thought, what? A live camera on me with very little preparation? What am I going to talk about? So it was kind of scary, but I made a commitment. So I'm going to do Periscope for 30 days. That was the commitment I made. Then you know what's required? Then re it requires courage. Now, courage is not the absence of fear. It's the willingness to take positive steps in the direction of your commitment, even though you're afraid. So for me, it meant getting on Periscope, feeling kind of scared, and doing it anyway. Here's a cool thing, is that once you take the courage on the commitment, you develop a new capability. So now I'm getting more and more comfortable with this, right? So it's, it's easier than it was at the beginning. I'm not totally comfortable, but it's a little bit more comfortable than when I began. And then, once you've done the commitment, you've done the courage, you've done the capability, then you develop confidence. Now this is a model that Dan Sullivan teaches, and I can't remember what he calls it. I think he calls it the four C's. So commitment, courage, capability, and confidence. The confidence does not come before the courage. And to the outside world, courage and confidence look much the same, but they feel different internally. When you feel confident, then you take on even bigger goals. So the next time around the loop, you're willing to take on something bigger and make a bigger commitment. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so uh, Corday Scope, Hashtag Corday Scope, I guess it's John Cordray said, you inspired me to launch my own Periscope. Sorry, I butchered your name. Confidence requires action, Her Life Project says, and that's exactly right. Geeky Me says, everyone is a leader, whether they know it or not, think about it. So true. If you've got influence, whether you have the position or not, you're a leader. Uh, Vivi Barbagaleta, thanks for the recap. Fantastic. Okay, what are the questions you guys have? We've got a few minutes left. You got a question about the podcast today. By the way, I was going to tell you guys, I moved my podcast out of the business section to the self-help section, which is much more descriptive of what I do. So Brian says, not an outdoor question, what point did you need a booking agent for speaking? Um, when the requests were coming, when the requests began to come in, and I didn't want to be the guy negotiating my fees. You know, I would say get a booking agent as soon as you can. It makes it, your life so much easier. But I know they're also hard to get. All right, so uh, somebody up there put a tweetable moment. The confidence does not come before the courage. It's exactly right. Any more on outdoor tips? Yeah. Here's one thing on an outdoor tip. Get outdoors. Use a dual purpose. Like if you've got a family activity that you want to do, why not do it outdoors? And I talked about this on the podcast today. Or if uh, you need to get some physical exercise, why not do it outdoors? Don't do it indoors. Go ahead and do it outdoors where you can get 
sunshine and vitamin D and all those positive things that promote health and uh, rejuvenation. Why did I leave Thomas Nelson Publishers? Somebody asked, just asked that question. Uh, because we had sold the company to HarperCollins and I remained on as the chairman for a year and it was just my time to go out and write and speak full time, which is something I'd always wanted to, to do. So, uh, bold and fearless one said, just spoke on this on my uh, scope today, opportunities are attracted to action. So true. Um, Ambassador Moore says, how can I launch my speaking career with no experience? Great question. One of the first things you need to do is let the world know that you're in business by creating a speaking page. Put a speaking page on your blog or on your website. That's where it all begins. Okay? So, um, somebody says, what's 3C? I think it's actually the 4Cs. Again, to recap, that's a concept from Dan Sullivan. The concept is commitment comes first. And then courage, you develop a new capability, and then you have the confidence, and then you can go right back around the circle again. Somebody just asked me if I use a goals app. No, I actually track all my goals inside of Evernote. I've written an Evernote uh, post on that. So what do you recommend to put on the speaking page? Uh, Pay Own says that. Um, I have actually in my book platform, Get Noticed in a Noisy World, I have two chapters on that, what exactly to put on your speaking page. And I think there's 10 different elements. Um, Absolute You says Evernote is changing my life thanks to you. Marissa says, people want to know who you follow on Periscope. Thanks, Riss. She's one of my daughters. Um, I follow John Acuff, Andy Traub, Eric Fisher, the one and only Shalene Johnson, C-H-A-L-E-N-E Johnson. I follow Marissa Hyatt, my youngest daughter. I follow my uh, fourth daughter, Madeline Lemon, who's doing some fantastic uh, scopes related to health. Okay? Uh, somebody said there's a lot of motivational speakers on Periscope in North America. Yeah, that's probably true. Oh, and Gail said Lewis Howes. Absolutely. Love Lewis's stuff. L-E-W-I-S. Um, who are your mentors? Dan Sullivan, I, I mentioned, um, is one of my main ones. All the books that I read, all that stuff helps as well. What leadership characteristics would you like to see in a president of the U.S.? Wow. Okay, I'm trying to think how I could answer this without being political. You know, I would like to see somebody that's authentic. Um, I think kind of the system we have works against us because people feel like they got to act like they know everything, and um, I, I don't, it's sometimes hard to separate the image from the person. You know, I want, to, I want somebody that's authentic, somebody that addresses issues head on, that doesn't dodge the questions, but answers them directly. Uh, somebody said, at Gail Hyde, I love how you ladies support him. We think he's pretty awesome too. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, I've got a blessed family. My wife is so incredibly supportive. I wouldn't be where I'm at today without her. Um, somebody said, Neil said to Madeline Lemon, are you cooking again soon? That, that is a question for, for her. Um, so somebody said, Kurt Johnson, everything that Trump isn't, I don't know. I'm not going to make a comment on the candidates. Um, John Cordray says, my virtual mentors are you, Pat Flynn, John Dumas, and Chris Ducker. Thank you. Thank you for including me in that group. I follow all those guys, uh, too. Sarah has a shout out to my wife. As somebody said, Kathy said, that's an excellent non-political answer. Let me just tell you something. I have deep political convictions, and <laughs> every time I express them in social media, I get hammered. Unfortunately, we live in a culture where it's so polarizing that you can't say anything. You can't even have a thoughtful conversation without pulling down thunder from half the population. So I, I try to abstract it from the candidates and just talk about leadership uh, in general. So what about getting outside? Yeah, I'm for it. Uh, Aaron says, what are your favorite outdoor activities for team building? We haven't done a lot of activities this year uh, for team building that are outdoor activities, but I have in the past taken groups that I mentor and so forth on ropes courses and hiking and fishing and a lot of different things like that, camping, which is a great thing to do too. Um, ah, Madeline Lemon says, yeah, this is a great outdoor activity. Kind of, Madeline. We're taking everybody in my company on a cruise this fall. So it's kind of a reward for a goal that we all set and accomplished, so we're gonna go on a cruise uh, together. 
So any last questions? We're almost out of time and I want to respect the time. I want to keep this right at 30 minutes. So let's play tennis, somebody says. Yeah, I'd love that. I am a tennis pro. I think that's what the handle is. Those are hard to read. Tammy, how long is your retreat? It's actually two and a half days. So we started Monday night. We met all day yesterday. We've met all morning this morning. We're going to meet all this afternoon. And then we're going to do some special stuff tomorrow. So I guess you could say three and a half days. Um, somebody said Brendan Burchard doesn't scope. I don't think he does. I haven't seen any uh, scopes from him. Where is the retreat? We are in College Grove, Tennessee. It's just outside of Nashville. It's a beautiful location out in the country. We have the rolling hills on every side of us. And it's just awesome. Last night we had a long, slow dinner and we just had fellowship and we talked about our marriages. We talked about our kids. We talked about the things that are important uh, to us. Kathy says, do you always aim for green time or any outdoor time, concrete jungle outside? I do. I try to spend out outdoors as much as I can, especially with exercise especially when we're not in the summer when it's really hot or the winter when it's really cold. So spring and fall, I especially in Tennessee love to be outside. So Don Olin says, I just finished your Get Published course. It's solid. Thanks, Don. I think we met at a, a launch conference maybe. Uh, Clay says, do you tour or do conferences? You know, I don't do that much external speaking. A few engagements every year. I used to do, about three years ago, I was doing 60 events a year, 60 to 70. I whittled that down to almost nothing. You know why? Because I like to be home. I love my family. Uh, and I can do a webinar. I can have 8,000 people register for a webinar and never leave home and talk to more people in a single webinar than in the old days. You know, I'd have to talk to 10 or 20 uh, speaking engagements to talk to that many people. How did you choose the time to Periscope, Dan wants to know. Well, it's honestly a 30-day experiment. Do you guys think I should continue this? You know, if you do, give me some hearts. Um, I'd like to hear from you because I want this to only go forward if it's going to add value to you guys. I personally think it's one of the greatest leadership tools ever invented it because it gives us this kind of intimacy. Hi from Norway. So a lot of people are saying yes. Fantastic. And I do think I get requests every day in the mail, uh, in the email, people asking me to mentor them. I just can't do that. I can't scale it. But I can do it in this format on a daily basis, Monday through Friday, for a half an hour. You know, it takes almost no uh, preparation. So somebody said, hi from England. Okay guys, we're gonna wrap it up. Here's the deal. The rest of the day, I say this every day, the rest of the day, whether it's one hour, six hours, or 12 hours, is for you a blank canvas. You can paint on it whatever you want. All I'm gonna ask is that you be intentional, and make it an awesome day. Thanks for joining me. I consider it a privilege to be able to do this with you. I so appreciate your feedback. I hope that you'll subscribe to this. Again, just touch that little icon in the lower right-hand corner, swipe up, and subscribe to my feed, and I'll notify you when we do the next scope, which will be tomorrow at 1230 Central Daylight Time. Love you guys. See you soon.